So, what we've kind of, how I've developed, how we look at uh, running the offensive line, you know, this, from a framework standpoint, our offense, uh, and then we have what we need to do underneath the offense, what's our mission, and then how do we accomplish that mission underneath it. So our offense, we are uh, single wing, uh, we flop to strength. So that outside tackle, that OT, that looks like a tight end, the whole line flops, that, this is red formation, We'll flop black uh, in black formation. What happens behind us, you know, we do, we do all kinds of window dressing behind us. Uh, you know, I'm not really concerned about it unless they're going to leave us short to the, uh, uh, to the point of attack. You know, we got to understand that for doing the motions and the, and the formations. That, uh, you know, as linemen, we love to just line up and face red and punch in the mouth. That's what we love to do. We really based off of uh, a couple different uh, pretty well-known single inside the single wing folks, uh, Rick Darlington. Uh, we run a lot of his stuff. Uh, let's see, guy at Webster City, Coach Bob Howard, we do his spin stuff. Um, and then there's other things that we pick up along the way. All right. So our offense, what it comes down to for us, you know, I think we had 400 yards passing last year. So we're running the ball. We're stacking in the ball. So. You know, when we do our uh, game planning, we're going to match, is what we call it. So power, counter, ISO sweep. We've got direct series, jet series, you know, and spin series. We've got a couple other things that we do, but that's really our bread and butter. Power, counter, ISO sweep. We're going to find, you're not gonna, you're gonna, if you want to stop one of them, we're going to find another one that you can't stop. That's our, that's our uh, strategy. We run some trap. You know, I call it a change up, run wedge, uh, which is a, a lot of fun for the offensive line and our blocking back. When we do pass, uh, most of our passes are based off our runs. So we have sweep pass, power pass, counter pass. We do some, uh, we have decent packages for uh, drop pass passing as well. Um, you know, we just, we've had a lot of luck with the run and uh, um, we just haven't really, you know, in our, the way we look at our program, we don't have, I think in the last 25 years, you know, solid quarterback play a couple times, you know, so we just decided based on the kids that we have, let's get them in an offense, you know, we can take advantage of what they're good at. They're good at being good boys, working hard, smashing, uh, you know, uh, smashing people in the mouth. All right, so our mission, what do we want to do? We're creating movement, we're bringing numbers to the point of attack, we want to break uh, our, our opponent's will. We want to get them to quit. So great movement. How do we do that? We're a shoulder blocking team. So I told you we're, you know, you're going to talk to a dinosaur. That's what we are. We're a shoulder blocking team. You know, we talk about if your mom's on the other side of a, a, a door that's locked and the, the building's burning, would you go up and do this? No, nope, you'd probably run in and hit with your shoulder. We're trying to smack you in the mouth. Uh, we use leverage to our advantage, physical, positional. We'll talk about more about that later. One of our big mantras, I got this from Harvard. UP kid originally, so uh, six, six seconds of rage, six seconds of effort, every step, consistent effort, coaching that effort. And then creating movement, we play downhill, we're coming at you. We want to, we want to punch in the mouth, we want, to, we want you to get sick and get hit hard. Uh, I don't have audio here, but this, it's a nice uh, video, I kind of use this as a repository for training. Nice video of Joe Thomas talking about shoulder blocking, how he gets to the hip, how he stays low. A lot of the similar things that we do. Numbers of point of attack. So we're unbalanced single wing. We flop to strength. Um, we're trying to kind of form get you in an uncomfortable position uh, formationally. We pull out into the point of attack. You know, if you're a guard in our system, you, it's really like being a fullback. It's a ton of fun. They're, they're out in space trying to knock kids in the head all the time. Uh, get hats on hats. Uh, big part that when I came was to figure out how to get guys not to steal their buddy's block. You know, guys engage, and the next guy would come in and just block the same guy with his buddy. Get hats on hats, sort out the folks that are in front of you, get a numbers advantage at the point of attack. We're trying to get so many people there, you don't know what to do with Break their will, this kind of gets a little vitriolic, but I, get, I like to do this way sometimes. Wars are won by attrition. We're trying to get them to quit. So. You know, a lot of first drives for us, we get stopped because they have all their keys, they're all jacked up, they're, they're disciplined, 
But as the pain wears on, they're going to get tired, they're going to get sick of getting hit, and they're going to get sick of holding on to their keys, and they're going to make mistakes. That's when we know we can just change the, the tide at that point. These awards are won by attrition. Unleash six seconds of effort, six seconds of range, every snap. Consistent effort. Finish. So when we say finish, we want guys on the ground. We want guys to know that when they get their film session, they're going to have to see themselves getting up off the ground. We want to demoralize what they're doing. Outlast the opponent's will to win. Break the will. All right. So when I grade, sometimes I grade film if I need to. We look at assignment, technique, execution. What do they need to do? How do they do it? And how well are they going to do it? So we look at assignment. Just knowing, uh, we, we don't have a lot of plays. Power, counter, ice, and sweep. You need to know uh, rope knowledge for every play, every position, any front. Know that's the simple system at an elite level. Like riding a bike. You can just, you just get on because you just know what you need to do. Simple systems at an elite level knowledge. Like I said, sorting hat on hat, we want to make sure we're, we're accounting for every defender in the box. We don't, we don't really double team very often. We're a saber team or a track blocking team. We're trying to make sure we got we have a numbers advantage because we're, di we're direct snapping in single wing. We're not you know uh, booting back with a quarterback. He's coming to the play, so we got to sort every hat on hat to give our chance, give us a chance of success. Uh, vision, decision, action. We don't want to be fooled by shiny objects. We you know we had a lot of problems early on when I started coaching. You know, if your job is to down block, but he's got a guy kind of in front of him, he goes for that guy. Nope, it's gap down backer. Don't be fooled by shiny objects. Uh, vision, decision, action. Be able to see, decide, act inside of the play. Uh, we work a lot on helping players understand why. You know, uh, I, I remember playing at St. Norbert, and just, well, this is my job. I don't really understand what's going on behind me. So they really understand ISO, really understand power. So when they come to the sidelines, you know, we, like it says, we encourage our players play the game. It's their game. I should be able to just sit there and give, give you a couple little adjustments. But you should know the schemes well enough, because they're simple, uh, that you can just come in and, and figure, they're the best uh, adjustments that we make, or plays that we want to call, the, uh, the, the players give those suggestions for us. All right. Techniques. Uh, what we look to do is define a toolbox of techniques. It's easy to, we put them in a, we want to uh, have them named, so it's just easy communication back and forth. Uh, we want to give our guys answers. So that's how, in our mind, we build toughness. Is we give everybody, we give you enough answers that no matter how big that kid is, you've got an answer to be able to block him. You've got a technique that you can use. Uh, drills, this is something I learned a lot. Uh, want those to correlate specifically to body movements that we need, that are, is going to show up on film. You know, when I first started, I was putting the, cigar dummies and we're doing the one ins and that, those are great drills, they're fun, but it doesn't really correlate to what we need to, to see on the film. Uh, I switch uh, what I do to every week drills instead of every day drills. Um, what we need, what it says what you neglect will degrade. So I don't have time to do where I have to work on a drill every single day. We want to make sure that we're hitting our different drills uh, every week. Uh, drill set variety uh, we're doing drills to, uh, based on improving techniques uh, and the diversity uh, increases engagement. Okay, so leverage. Physical leverage, uh, we have lift away from the playing surface and drive parallel, parallel to the playing surface. We're looking to unlock the defender's hips and ankles. Positional leverage is just kind of like playing basketball. Uh, we're keeping our body between the defender and the ball. Execution. Holding players accountable to standards of effort and consistency. We're trying to make sure that we're bringing that six seconds of range every single play. Uh, we're looking to create mantras that we can communicate. So six seconds of rage, uh, intellectual brutality, you know, play to the echo of the whistle, those types of things to communicate expectations. We do set uh, group goals. Um, you know, we try to make a team oriented. Yards, points, wins, penalties. Uh, offensive line culture and class is very distinct. So we do two platoon, uh, you know, so we have to make sure that our position group 
uh, is one that people kids want to play in. So we do things like wing nights. You know, when we score a touchdown at home, they uh, um, announce the whole uh, offensive line. It's kind of cool. It's brought to you by the offensive line. They announce every kid. It's kind of a special thing. And you think it's not a big deal, but it's pretty cool for that parent that's sitting in the stands and they get the kid announced on every touchdown. You know, it comes down to execution consistent, teaching of technique, and just straightforward uh, feedback, honest, straightforward feedback. Uh, don't BS them. Tell them where they're at. If they're, if, they're, if they're not at a starting level, why? What can they do? Don't BS them. All right, so run blocking techniques. Uh, first level defenders, we use a base block, a down block, and a reach block. Very simple. Uh, base block is where someone, uh, your defender's in, kind of in the, lined up uh, directly in front of you. Down block is a down block. Reach is a, uh, we're in a, a running sweep. Uh, and then pulling, we power pull, which is a skip pull, and then we trap pull, which we use on uh, uh, counter, on trap, sometimes on power if we're doing what we call a dog or our front side dart uh, kicks up at the end. Uh, run block and progression. So, Steps, strike, drive, finish. Pretty simple. You'll see it in a lot of double wing, single wing, using gap scheme uh, books. Get your steps down, get your tempo, get your steps down. Step, strike, drive, finish. All right, our steps. You know, we're, looking, we're trying to get to the defender's hip, all right? It's kind of like when you're cut blocking, which we don't do, and they say, you know, aim for the knees to get the thigh. For us, we want it, our eyes on the hip, so that when we get into him, we're probably going to get into his rib cage. Uh, we position step on an angle, power step to create a base. All right, we want to get those first two steps down before they know what's coming. Big problem we have is eliminating false steps and under steps. So if anybody has a solution, let me know. We try the PVC pipe stuff, going on a line, all different kinds of things to try to eliminate that false step. So you know, picking up, we want movement. We need to move so much if we get we get this or we get an under step like that. Flat back, stay low. So how do you teach a kid to stay low? In my mind, how we teach them, we want to feel your jersey number on your knee. So this jersey number, we want to be here where you can feel his knee. Strike, you know, we're a shoulder blocking team, but it's not necessarily at the top of the shoulder. It's really a flipper surface. So it would be like this. This would be your shoulder, not this, typically. We're trying to strike uh, low to the rib cage. We want to unlock their center of gravity, uh, unlock their hips and ankles, disrupt their position on the field. Drive, get the lender, get the defender off the line, maintain contact, stay flat back, don't fall out the window. So don't get over your ski tips, maintain that you can stay up above, uh, not on the ground, palm feet on in steps, get your butt out of the hole. Finish, swing hips to maintain the positional leverage. We work a lot on welding to your man. We're not against hand blocking if we have to. If we lose, uh, if we get separation, we'll transition to hands. That's fine, that's very similar to our reach block. If we don't, if we don't have shoulder contact, we'll, tra we'll transition. Uh, finish with defender on ground or seal off. And again, don't quit until the echo of the whistle. Finish with the tap. All right. A lot of what we do is based on this, gap down backer. It's track blocking. So you're gonna, if, you're, uh, if your responsibility is, is a down block, you're gonna check that inside gap. So it goes from your inside shoulder to the inside shoulder of the man to your inside. If there's somebody in that gap within two yards, whether he's a down lineman or a, a, a backer that shows or, or a lion's there, that's your guy. Get through your gap, then you can go on up to backer. So uh, video on the left, this is our kid that's up at uh, Minnesota Duluth right now. Um, this is just, just kind of going through what our progression is. So this is a, a, a bird dog type drill. This is what we do early in the season for sure during contact days. You know, grab a shield, grab a partner. We're working on the steps.
We're just trying to isolate those steps to make sure we're doing the right things. And then we'll speed it up as we get better at it. Step, step. The other thing you'll notice with us, we don't hold shields out like this. We hold shields against our body. I got that from uh, the Patriots whole whole line coach. Give them a surface that has a better feel to it. We keep, we keep our shields on the body. So then you progress to a full down block. Step, strike, finish. <coughs> base block, essentially the base block is, we really only need base block if I've got a tight shape uh, and I need to down block the guy. I can't just take a step to, I'll end up crossing the space. A lot of, most times we, we rarely ask a kid to take a guy head on. We give him a, a base block technique. So if we're running ISO, we're running this way, he'll step with his opposite foot and then strike with that shoulder. So base block is just a way to, to handle a head up defender uh, when there's no other way to get an angle on with a down block. All the, all the progression is the same, the same except for the first step. Another bird dog drill. You do early in the season. Get your partner. Do your shield. Take a step. Step. Just hit it. And as a coach, you'll just say, "Ready, set, go, go, go." Giving that them that progression so they can isolate the steps, and then we keep speeding it up. Step, step, fit. Just getting himself in a position to angle. Reach block. You know, is it really a bucket step? No, it's an angle step. Uh, we step play sets, really like outside zone for us. You know, if, if we're outside zone guys, it looks like outside zone when we reach. Uh, first step uh, with outside foot. Second step, we want to uh, split defender's crotch, punch inside hand to defender's chest. I kind of like the outside number, inside number. I've heard some guys talk about we weren't as specific as they are. Uh, punch outside hand to defender's outside shoulder. Uh, if we can drive them uh, vertically, we'll do it. Many times we'll just pin them inside. We're trying to get green space out, out uh, in the flats for our, our running backs to get, get going. Uh, so we'll try to pin inside. We can't do that. If we've got a face and drive vertically, we'll do that. If they're running way outside on us, we'll wash them out and cut out underneath them. So the progression for that that we do. Step, step, and punch. I want that second foot, the one thing around here is I want that second foot down before we punch. So we have a base and then punch. Step, step, and punch. Inside hand to defender's chest. All right, this is full speed. Get there, drive vertically, get around, positional leverage. Okay, power pull. Uh, if you have any North Dakota State fans, you know, they're A-gap power, we're C-gap power. Uh, we skip pull. So it was new to me when I came to Pulaski. Uh, we look to, when we're pulling, accelerate, tempo the feet, strike, and accelerate, maintain, uh, maintain contact. We're looking to uh, keep shoulders square to the line of scrimmage. We want vertical, vertical vision. We want a forward lean. You see it sometimes in our film. A kid comes through the power funnel like this, and he gets killed by that Mike linebacker. Want to look up and out, eyes inside the funnel, looking for that first man. You know, and then when, when we're power pulling like this, when we're in the box. It's really very similar to a tackle. You know, we're sinking our hips. We're exploding our uh, near shoulder pad into their chest. Near foot, near shoulder, that's kind of a saving thing. It's really almost like a tackle. We're hitting with our shoulder on, on the run. Maintain feet, finish, get them on the ground. <coughs> this is our circle pull drill. Um, this actually comes from a guy, uh, his name's Coach Wyatt. He's a double wing uh, type guy. But this is a good example of how we power pull all of those. Let's get pull, forward lean. Step and strike. Eyes inside, step and strike. Trap pull, 
you know, I'm guessing most folks in here know how to trap pull, you know. Uh, but if not, you know, it's uh, throw the elbow, open the hips, scrape the, you know, step into the line is a big key for us. It's not just down, you know, not, don't, don't choose the angle. Take the angle of the, of the edge or the line. Accelerate, tempo strike, accelerate. Uh, we want to track to split the defender's crotch with your, with your outside foot. Head placement off field, again, tempo those feet. Don't let them juke you. That's a big thing. We, you know, we get those athletic DNs that try to put a move on us. Tempo the feet, buzz the feet, get yourself in a position. Sink load the hips, maintain feet, uh, transition if we need to. Don't let the man get over on top of you, especially in the <laughs> This is an old, old drill, our initial uh, counter drill. But the guy in red shorts is just an example of how we trap pull. Step into the line. Not great, but we're, gonna, you know, we're in a gym. OK, uh, run blocking drills. Big thing we do, probably you know, early, early in the season, is our progression. We're going to do that every day. Base, down, reach. Grab a shield, grab a partner. We're going to do reps both ways. We're going to spend 15, 20 minutes every day uh, during camp. Powerful choice. I've got a video of this later. Uh, this is our, we're trying to, uh, that's our, uh, giving our uh, kids uh, opportunity to hit in space and have to make decisions in space on who to hit. Counter drill, three bag, two by two, down block wall, uh, sled work. Being a single wing guy, you probably not hitting the sled all the time. Uh, we hit the sled probably once a week. Uh, I, I think it has its place, but to me it's a static thing. It doesn't move on you. I, you know, most single wing, double wing guys, they love the sled. I like the sled, it's fine. Uh, we use it, it's just not something that we're, you know, we're just the be all end all of what we do offensively. Um, shoot work, uh, we do do some shoot work, um, but we, you know, we're not gonna duck walk through the shoots. Uh, we're gonna get into the suit, shoot, so the first two steps, it forces them to, have, to stay low on those first two steps. So we start from a three point stance inside the suit, shoots, usually put a heavy bank, Basically, we can get out of that shoot, you know, make it be aggressive and get out of that shoot. Sometimes we use boards. Something we do every week, we're working on wet, wedge reps on, on air just to, to make sure we're marrying our feet and doing the right thing. Uh, additional drills we do, uh, I've got video of this, roller swerve. Uh, we do, in case we need to, once in a while we'll do a double team. We do have a double team tag on, on our counter play. Uh, so we do work on it some, Bulldog Sumo, Power Hour. Uh, space marathon video of that, but that's just getting us uh, ability to trap defenders in space. Uh, blind wedge, we work wedge uh, where everybody hold, uh, closes their eyes except the center for the apex. It's kind of cool drill. And then six point shoulder strike. That's just early in the season. We get on our hands and knees and we're just striking into a, a tall bag with our shoulders. Uh, we, we run into some teams that cut us at the point of attack where they cut at the first level. So we have a drill flipping crabs and kind of forklift them out of the hole, um, and then Gauntlet, I've got some, uh, some video on that. Uh, drill keys. We do not, uh, we don't condition like after practice. Like that, that was a big thing uh, when I started coaching high school. Was, when, when are we doing gasters? When are we doing our 40s, all that? We don't do that. We condition as we go. So we have to make sure in our drills that we're making these guys work. We're conditioning them as they go through practice. Again, we, we two platoon, so they're with me the whole time. I can make sure we're, we're, we're making them move. Uh, design, we like to do mirroring, to make sure, like we're doing a trap drill or something, we're going, just going away from it. Uh, each drill is working away from itself to keep it safe. Make sure we have equipment. Scale, meaning if you've got, you know, uh, it's really tough for me when I go on Twitter and I see drills and there's one guy, one shield, and 12 guys standing in line. Just add another, add another uh, set, add another uh, a station. Make sure you're scaling the drill out uh, that everybody's getting reps and tempo. Um, speaking of tempo, one thing we do, uh, and you'll see it, if we have two bag holders in a drill, we'll have another two waiting. It's a, it's a simple thing. But then once that drill's done, the two bag holders switch, they move off, the other two come in. It just gets you a lot more reps throughout the week and throughout the season. 
We try to make vision, decision, action part of uh, the drill design, making sure that they, it's not just a blocked static drill, like step, hit. No, we want to make sure, have them make decisions uh, based on invariability um, as they get in the drill, make sure they're working their mind and whatever they're going to see. Make them com competitive, uh, pressure, keep, the, keep the, uh, the enthusiasm up, quick feedback, we always want to make sure they're safe. So, this is kind of a bread and butter drill for us. Uh, power pull choice. So, you've got two offensive linemen, they're going to both power pull. You've got a coach, uh, you've got two bag holders. So, the triangles are bag holders. So, you're going to tell the uh, first bag holder to fill or feather. You know, so like a linebacker would do, fill or feather. First, uh, uh, first puller takes the first bag holder, second puller has to make a decision, either hits or climbs. Here's some video of that. So there's the design. You got a coach, he's gonna set the edge for you. And then I see with this, you can add some variability. If we have a good down block, sometimes our, we're gonna, it's gonna be a tighter pull. If, if we're more stagnated, we'll keep the, the, the edges gonna be wider. So we're giving them that variability, vision, decision, action. Here's the first, uh, uh, First bag holder, second bag holder does the opposite of the first bag holder. Fill, climb and hit. Feather, making sure we're getting hat on hat, sort it out. Don't steal your buddy's block. Sort it out. That's powerful choice. Counter drill. If we've got a, um, for us, if I if I can't be there, so, you know, I don't, I'm not a teacher. I'm not on their schedule once in a while. I cannot be there. And, and if I have somebody else that's got to take over, I just give them, a lot of times give them counter drill because I'm going to get a down block, I'm going to get a uh, trap pull, kick out, and I'm going to get a power pull. So it gives a lot of what we do is in this drill. Uh, this is a drill we, we for sure do once a week. Um, we add some variability. With the down block, maybe he'll try to spin, or the bag will try to spin, or shoot, or slant. Linebacker might fill, he might stay soft. DN's going to uh, box or spill, or squeeze. We're trying to give some variability to it because we always see janky stuff. With, it's never super clean on the counter. You're always going to see something different. Uh, Lido, Lido line in uh, traps, second line in power pulls. So, uh, the third batter here actually has a camera, so it's in a, uh, a shield on it. So you got the down lock here, you got the kick out here, and here's your two pullers. This one is a box, so we kick out, we're going to hit the filling back there. So squeeze, so we log and come around. Okay. Three bag sweep drill. We're trying to just jumble up uh, and give them a lot of looks. With, based on how uh, our plays go, especially on sweep, you're going to see people, humanity running all over the place. So we're trying to give them that complexity, give them that variability. All three uh, linemen are skip pulling. You're working inside out. You hit or climb. We're just trying to sort out the defenders. Don't pass up. Uh, don't pass up a block to the inside, uh, and don't try to steal your buddy's block if he's engaged. Climb and find somebody else. Lead bag sets the hook, sets, sorry, sets the look. The second uh, bag holders, they're free to kind of range and, and, and give, give guys different looks. So you got your uh, three linemen, and then you stack up your three bag holders. Sort, sort, sort. First bag's wide, sort. Fill, look at inside. Give them that variability. Okay. Another every week drill, two by two, uh, down block drill. So this goes with our scout. So if they're a cross face team, if they spin at the first, if they're a spin team, uh, if they slant, this is where we have that. This is where we're giving them reps. So we might have the, we've got a, a defensive lineman, we've got a, a linebacker. Linebacker can fill, scrape, loop. Uh, defensive guy can spin. 
slant, slant away, slant towards. We're trying to get all kinds of different looks that we think we're going to see based on the film that we have out there. Um, you might even see, you know, cut, the defense lineman might cut, all those things to make sure we're, we're able to get some reps to be able to uh, sort it out on Friday night. This is how it kind of looks. We'll also vary up where the backer is based on if we're going to go against a 4-3 or a, um, you know, a 52, whatever we're going to see where the backer depth typically is, we'll give you that difference. First one, we slant, we stay in our tracks. Not great blocks, but again, we're just working on, on sorting it out. D line and slants away. Track discipline, stay on your track. Backer comes up, he's yours. Gauntlet drill. Uh, we usually add, I didn't have enough boys here, but we usually add a fourth guy. Sometimes we put up, give a big agility pad behind him. Or uh, like an old high, high jump pad, uh, we'll make it a, a kill shot. But we're just trying to give these kids uh, opportunity to hit in space. Sink hips, temple, temple your feet, sink hips, shoulder strike in space. <clears throat> Down lock, step and strike. Step and strike, sink hips, hit. Last one, you to go to the whistle. Just giving them opportunities to strike. Well, there's swerve. This is a finish drill. A lot of times what we'll do is we'll count to six, six seconds of rage. Uh, we want you to engage uh, with the defender. We'll, we'll start uh, maybe three yards off. You strike, and then the defender will swerve, and then eventually let go of the, the bag to make sure that you're maintaining, uh, uh, maintaining contact. Let's go to the bag, maintain contact, move your feet. Swerve, maintain contact. Other, other guys that I've talked to, they call it a push and pester drill. Maintain contact down the field. <coughs> Echo the whistle. So uh, this is some power film. So to show you kind of how things look once we get on, on Friday night. All right, so we're in our black formation. Um, so we are uh, strong left. We're going to run power to the left here. So uh, we're gonna, we've got a dog block, so we're going to kick out with our uh, um, strong side guard. We've got the black back in a minus on the, uh, away from strength. He's usually on the strength side. We're trying to do a key breaker here, so we're going to kick out with the strong guard. So this is kind of like our uh, power choice drill. Making sure um, you know we're, we're getting comfortable in space and getting our and hitting hard. Here's our kick out. Here's our pull. Eyes inside. Seal off. Get kids on the ground is what we're trying to do. This is uh, against Superior Level 2. So we're running power. We're in red formation, strong right. We've got a head up defender on our outside tackle. So he's going to call. He's got a whale call. So he's going to influence out. Usually when we have a head up defender, he's going to uh, key off of that line in front of him. So we, can, we usually can get him to widen out. We've got a down block here, uh, a down block here, and we're pulling. Uh, backside with quick guard. All right, so we got our down ball, <coughs> not great. We got our kick out here. Here's we're see power pull, choice, gauntlet. We're hitting folks in space. That's what we're working on. Here's where it shows up. Not a great block, but it springs the play. This is level two against, or no, level one against Chippewa Falls. Uh, running power. Uh, eyes on this guy, our quick, our quick guard, coming around and finishing blocks. And we're going to another uh, dog. 
Kick off with our strong guard. We have to block him back in the minus. Kick out. We're going to finish this block. Get him on the ground. Okay, some counter film. Our strong guard climbs, it's janky, fine work. Okay, some sweep fill. So it gets rebel. So We'll watch here, our reach block here, uh, and then we'll look at getting numbers to the point of attack. We're in a red formation, so our line and our strong right, but our backfield is in a lucky, which would be strong right, the third line to the left. Working this reach block, this kid right here is all, all conference, did not catch one ball as a tight end, all conference tight end. So, because of blocks like this that, that he made it. Get guys on the ground, 62, climb. Six seconds to the echo of the whistle. This is weak sweep. Uh, so when we're working those three big sweep drills, we're trying to sort. Sometimes when we go to reach, we over we overreach. And the guy jumps inside, don't steal your buddy's block. So we sort, climb, get guys on the ground. Get guys on the ground. Finish. It's nice when our backs finish like this too. You know, we're actually not bad at pass pro. <laughs> we're a single wing team, but we're not bad. <laughs> no. I put it in here. You guys probably have much better stuff than I do. But, you know, I'm kind of proud of it. We haven't, I don't know if we allowed a sack really last year. So, uh, our drop back pass pro is pretty good. Um, you know, so all we teach it, uh, so I'll just go through it. Primary weapon is, is feet. Keep your body between uh, defender and pass or secondary weapon punch. Big thing I got this from Paul Alexander. Uh, if you follow him on Twitter, hand down the middle is dead. Is is dead. If you got a wide a wide tech, get that outside hand to the outside shoulder. Cover him up. 
Uh, inside, you know, got to see that Willie Anderson guy on Twitter. Inside hand is a stop sign. Don't get beat inside. Number one rule, don't get beat up inside. Don't lose aggression. Turn pass pro into run pro if you need to. If you have leverage, run them off. Get them on the ground. Do some, I think, fun pass blocking drills. Um, long near set and punch, near dodge. I got video of those. I want to share them with you. Pass more stance. I don't know. We probably need to teach you guys this. Uh, this is how we do it. You know, feet, general stuff. Elbows in, butt down, feet on a string, all that stuff. One thing I do like is uh, uh, rotate the turret, not the tank. If you've seen that, it's a John Strollo thing. Uh, that was with, uh, I think it was Penn State, a bunch of them. But when you're setting, rotate your turret. Don't rotate your tank. So keep your traps, you know, basically like keep square, but like you can rotate this, the top of your body, rotate the turret, not the tank. So keep your traps square. Uh, this is the drill we do. I saw this, I ripped this off of, uh, it's actually Kyle Long doing the long mirror drill. So we do this drill probably once a week. This allows guys stay in the stance, move, eyes on center mass. It's a good drill. You can get a lot of reps. You know, ready to go, ready to go, get beat, get, get better than buddy, a lot of reps. Uh, set punch. We do this a lot, just setting the different techniques. If you like this drill, give them uh, different shades, different techniques. Get that outside, uh, outside hand to the outside shoulder. Set and punch. Tight shave here, set, punch. It's a nice drill, but you know, if you think you know the alignment, you give the guy a different alignment, you do your outside tackles, give them wide nines, give them different things, have them cross space, all those different things. Good way to give them variability. Near dodge. To me, this is one of the best, best, uh, one of the best pass pro uh, drills. What I like about what we do, we, we do this one. We give a, we put the, it's not just a flat, two cones flat. We put it at an angle to kind of give, give it a look, a more of a realistic game day look. Near dodge is just working. Defender's working cone to cone. Spin, make him work. Eyes on center mass. Grab grass with the feet, feet on a string. Independent hands, that's how I teach it. Independent hands, eyes on center mass, move, move, move to the listen. This is one of the plays that you know I'll show kids as we go. So this is Menominee. Um, the guy that was presenting before talked about you know, the tough, fast, well, yeah, I was just saying, yes, 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 all those things. Such a challenge playing that team. Well coached and just highly motivated individuals. So this is against Menominee two years ago. This is uh just watch this guy. This is the kind of this is the effort that we're looking for. This is the finish that we're looking for. We want to unlock hips, unlock uh, ankles, disrupt center gravity. Shoulder block, drive, finish. Demoralize. <laughs> Same example of finishing. You know, we want we talk about being nasty, but not cheap. We want to be nasty, be tough, but not cheap. So same at Schwabon two years ago, they always have some big, big boys. So our outside tackle series gonna come down down block, just watch the finish on this. Another teaching tape. Taking a 400 pound man, lift them up. So we use our 
leverage, use our technique, disruptive. Get them on the ground. This is against River Falls, one day, two last year. So just a good example of track discipline. So we're going to have our inside tackle, gap down backer, through his gap, get to the backside backer. We're going to have outside tackle, uh, stay low on his track, get his down block. We're going to have our quick guard uh, with a nice pull, hit that linebacker, uh, and spray our back. Ten minutes, coach. All right. Here's our down block. He tried cutting us. We're rolling him out of the hole. Here's our gap down backer track, inside tackle to uh, the backside backer. We got our puller coming around. Hit the mic, spring the back. And it's nice having an all state back. That we did that then, so. This is an example of reach. So, if you watch our uh, tight end right here, Kim's 185 pounds, uh, going against probably a decent defensive end. Defensive end. It's a good example of our, our reach block. We can take a kid, put him at tight end. He doesn't have to be a massive kid. But if we give him the right techniques, he can get it done for us in the sweet game. Get around, get him vertical, pin him inside, give us some green space. Flex shot. Get around, drive vertical, pin inside. This gets Notre Dame. Uh, they give us a 60 front, either 4 4. Uh, usually very athletic kids, Catholic boys. Uh, we're just working on our reach block here. Get the pin inside, and we have to <coughs> take it right away. Give us green space to work in. Get bodies out there. Butt shot. Right here, he's reaching that defensive end. Step, strike, positional leverage. Give him some green space. Another teaching tape for finishing. This is Marshfield last year, level, level three. All tight tackle. Keep going to the echo of the whistle. Finish, finish. Nasty, not cheap. Well, 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 finish. This is a good take shape for uh, just getting numbers to the point of attack. Again, against Marshfield level three, we're running power to the left, getting numbers uh, and doing our power pull drill, getting in the hole, get the block. Quick guard pulls, numbers, gets the block. Doesn't have to be great, gets the guy on the ground, springs the touchdown. So uh, it's just a way, you know, like I talked about our offensive line, 
uh, culture is distinct. So we'll have a, a, a tackle counter. Give those big boys a chance. Right there, that number 30. Running back coach. <laughs> Rumbling, bumbling. Right there, that number 30, he broke his arm on that play. Trying to tackle him, on our outside tackle. So that's what I got. You know, uh, we're not, we're not, uh, we're not uh, uh, out here trying to preach what we do. This is what we think works best for our kids. Frankly, you know, if you're Division Two in the state, I really don't want you around this stuff because then you're going to give other people tape that, that that are used to it. We want to get in the playoffs, and you think, okay, how many? And you have so many. You see it today. How many spread teams there are? You know, for us to line up and spread, we don't have. We feel like we don't have the athletes to match up on a consistent season to season basis. Uh, you know, there's positions in our offense inside tackle. You know, we call them a road. Uh, uh, a road cone, you know, where it's just, it's, you can put a lot of different kids there. They don't have to be fantastic. Uh, we don't ask a lot of them. We just, if they work on the techniques, you know, we can put, we put them in a position to be successful. So it's a culture that we've built uh, over the last, you know, four, five, six years. It's taken a lot of time, you know, uh, top to bottom with the culture, you know, in the community so that they understand single wing. Now that we've had some success, they're all about it, obviously. So uh, again, it's not something we're, we're preaching that, hey, it's for everybody. Uh, we, for us, we don't feel like we can, you either have to be a, really good at something that other people are at, or you can be different. We feel like we, we're, we're gonna be different and then be really good at being different for what we do. So if you guys have any questions or that's. Coach, can you explain why um, you said your inside tackle is the one that's not as good? That's what you said. Yeah, well, because he doesn't have to pull and He's usually got a, a, a gap down block, so uh, he doesn't have to move in space. Uh, he's not really asked. Uh, our outside tackle, he's got a you know he's calling power. There's five tags on power. He's calling power. He's got to be able to reach block. He's got to pull on counter. He's got to do a lot of things athletically. The inside tackle, he can kind of be a brute. You know, he can kind of be a kind of not very well oiled hips. You know, he can be just kind of a hit the nail. You know, type guy. So. Coach, you ever get your head across that your gap blocks or not? They're always on top. You know, that's kind of a wing T thing in my mind. We don't um, because we're trying to seal off. Our splits are real tight, so we, we haven't done that across. We're trying to drive them down. We found having the, the head on the play side is a, is a better technique for us. So, but I have seen, that's what we did at, you know, at St. Arbor when we did the beer. We had wider splits. And, you know, we don't get a lot of penetrating defensive linemen, they're kind of playing the gap and sitting in there, we got to move them out of it. If they penetrate it hard, it'd be easier to do that, you know. Coach, do you adjust your splits at all based on functionality? Yeah, so what we do, we don't really, we tell them six inches, they kind of get comfortable. You know, I'm not a, you know, this would be heresy if you're talking to some of these guys, O-line guys on, uh, on Twitter. I'm not a huge stickler on stance. I want them to be comfortable, I want it to be actionable, um, and same with splits. So some guys, they might just be a little bit more comfortable at three inches, seven inches, that's fine. So but we usually say six inches. What we do um, adjust splits is if we're, uh, if you're the outside tackle and we're running power, and you got an outside, you know, if he's got an inside gap player, he's got a down block, but if he doesn't, he can call tunnel, so he's gonna base out. So if his guy's out here and he knows he's gonna call tunnel, He'll just stretch them out a little bit, see how far you can go. Smart splits, flex splits. Next thing.